Now, before we begin our panel discussion, let us welcome the County Executive W. Burl Ellis, Jr. He's the Chief Executive Officer of DeKalb County Government in Georgia. He also serves as the second Vice President of the County Executives of America. Uh, he represents nearly 700 counties in 45 states that operate under a county executive government structure and works directly with the principal decision makers in all areas of the federal government to ensure the concerns of uh, county residents, uh, assure that those uh, concerns are addressed, I should say, at the national level. Now, please join me in welcoming uh, County Executive Ellis. Afternoon. It's good to be here today. Thank you, Monica, for that nice introduction. Uh, as she mentioned, I'm from DeKalb County, Georgia, which is the birthplace of Atlanta and the greenest county in the nation. As CEO, I run an urban county that is home to more than 700,000 Atlantans, over 7,000 employees, with a budget of more than $1.3 billion. DeKalb County is the adopted home of the late hip hop icon Tupac Shakur the headquarters for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and home to Emory University. DeKalb County is also home to the once infamous Stone Mountain, mentioned in Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, where his impassioned voice sang out, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Stone Mountain was once the site of an annual rite of cross burnings by the Ku Klux Klan dating back to 1915. But Stone Mountain today is home to a largely affluent African-American community, and DeKalb County as a whole is considered the second largest, most affluent, and best educated population of African-Americans in the United States. We've come a long way. Today's session focuses on one of the most important topics of this generation how broadband and the internet impact the way we work, play, and stay connected. As chief executive, I can tell you that there is nothing more important to the people of my county than jobs. And not just any jobs, but high wage jobs that are part of the new global economy. Jobs that are driven by and dependent upon broadband infrastructure. We have a responsibility in this new global economy to leverage public spending in order to not only provide services to our citizens, but to create jobs for citizens as well. We accomplish this by requiring our government contractors to give preference to local residents in hiring. And we accomplish this by promoting small, local-based, and usually minority-owned businesses by incentivizing partnerships with large vendors and county contracts. These joint venture relationships between larger, more established enterprises and smaller local-based businesses have a substantial positive impact on our regional tax base and our local economy. Government-mandated incentives designed to create jobs and put people back to work have never been needed more than today. Right now, as we meet, the economy remains uncertain and it's likely to worsen for all of us if an agreement is not reached on raising the debt ceiling. The U.S. could lose its top credit rating, wreaking havoc on urban communities nationwide, with a subsequent rise in mortgage rates, the downgrading of state and local governments, and the shrinking of business confidence, which could lead to prolonged high unemployment. If this happens, the recent gains in employment could evaporate overnight. Recent statistics by the Pew Research Institute depict a, a troubling trend in terms of broadband access and use. 65% of all whites have access to broadband in the home, while only 52% of blacks and 45% of Latinos have access to broadband in the home. It is deeply disturbing that the country that invented the internet in the 1960s would, nearly half a century later, still have more than half the minorities in the United States without access to broadband, an essential element for using the internet today. 
The U.S. Commerce Department goes even further in its Digital Nation 2 study, which shows linkages between Internet use and income, education, race, and age. For instance, a person with a college degree is more likely to have broadband Internet than his or her counterpart with a high school diploma or less. Similarly, Hispanic households and non-Hispanic black households have broadband internet adoption rates, which are only half of non-Hispanic white adoption rates. Technological disparities also closely track wealth disparities. According to recently released census data, whites on average have 20 times the net worth of blacks and 18 times that of Hispanics. Those with access to broadband are more likely to have the financial, analytical, and problem-solving skills necessary to qualify for high executive and entrepreneur positions that lead to the accumulation of wealth. Access to broadband is a 21st century civil rights issue. Those without access are increasingly disenfranchised and marginalized in the new global economy. Those without access are less likely to participate in civic engagement, which is more each day becoming an online activity, and less able to participate in electronic democracy or access many governmental and private sector services. Those without access to broadband technology are increasingly disadvantaged in terms of education as more educational content is delivered online. Those without access to broadband technology are disadvantaged in terms of access to the marketplace and job searches. Those without access are more likely to suffer health-wise as broadband is being used more frequently to deliver health care services to underserved rural and economically disadvantaged communities. And as we are seeing, those without access are suffering wealth-wise as more and more minorities are victimized by the digital divide. We have the opportunity today to bring the benefits and advantages of a wired society to all. It will take organizations such as the National Urban League working with the public and private sectors to provide digital opportunities to all Americans. In today's society, access to digital infrastructure is as important as access to water, sewer, and transportation infrastructure. Broadband is an inseparable part of our economy and is essential to the creation of jobs. Access to broadband is a civil right which in our new global economy must be available to all. Thank you very much. God bless you all.